and welcome to another video. This video is on aquaponics, specifically my aquaponics and, and my trials and tribulations with it. I have been running this aquaponics uh, for about a year now. The reason I got into aquaponics was basically I, I thought the idea of growing your own stuff at home without any uh, you know insect killers uh, or any chemicals put into it was awesome. The idea of uh, incorporating fish, fish make your uh, make a byproduct that ends up becoming fertilizer plant food. I thought that was an awesome way to do it. You could grow food year round for your family. It just sounded fun to me. So that's why I got into it originally. So in our fish tank, as you can see, we have chosen to have guppies. Guppies are wonderful little fish. They're tropical. They multiply like crazy. And with all their different colors, they're, they're nice to look at. And my children absolutely love the little guppies. And as a side benefit, I have reptiles, quite a few of them. One of which is a little snake that eats little fish. So the extra guppies that get produced help with the feeding with that little snake as well. This system, if you look in this video right here, you see I got a, a pump down here in the bottom of the fish tank and that black hose, the water gets pumped up that hose all the way up to an orange bucket. It's a Home Depot bucket. What that bucket is is a swirl filter. So then the water then flows into these grow beds. These grow beds, the, the concept of them is deep water culture. So it runs into each bed one at a time and then at the end of the line of four, it drops back out straight down into a well, you see a split where the one pipe goes into the fish tank directly back where the fish are. That's my overflow. And then all the water I can get into this coffee pot gets heated there. And my water gets heated and then dropped into a lower tote, which is full of rock, great big river rock, and water. It acts as a buffer between the hot water and the fish. So when it comes out to the fish it's not scalding fish and so far the systems worked really great with that little coffee maker and it's not on all the time it's averaging I would think six to nine hours and we're in the dead of cold right now in northern climate so right now I think currently it's like negative eight outside so to keep this system about 70 degrees that thing's only running six to nine hours a day total that's in a 24-hour cycle and it comes on every time that water pump comes on but that's the whole flow of the water this current aquaponics system has no plants as you can see there's 36 spots available and there's nothing in it it's a wasteland I tell you just a few weeks ago it was totally opposite I had huge tomato plants I had uh, snow peas I had uh, four or five uh, bell peppers reds yellows greens all sorts of stuff I can't think of everything that I had in there the problem is is I had all of a sudden I got introduced to, uh, to aphids in aquaponics not not good uh, I tried all sorts of stuff from neem oil to different things the problem is is what you put on the plant you got to be really really careful because if it gets into that water at all it's gonna harm your fish so you gotta be super careful and I tell you I battled it and battled it for it seemed a couple months I wasn't making any headway absolutely not uh, the aphids were getting uh, well they were feasting out they were just thriving quite well they were getting my vegetables and I wasn't so at the end I decided well one quick and easy way to cure that is pull them all out I pulled every plant got rid of them I'm starting from scratch no more bringing plants from the outside. Anything that comes in the aquaponics system from here on out, I'm going to try to start from seed. So I've got uh, some seeds right now germinating. I've got some lettuce and some other things. And so that's that's where we're at currently. That when I had to take the plants out of this system, it, for one, it was heartbreaking. All the time and energy 
uh, put into growing these plants. It, it was just sad. Plus, you know, you hope that, that your garden does well anyway. When I had to take them out, I lifted up these lids on these totes just to see, because I want to see what the root systems look like on these plants. And I was amazed. These de the, the roots, some of them went from the very top all the way down to the bottom, and they were everywhere. Just pure white roots all through that water system. It was just crazy how big the root systems got on these plants. As you can see, these cups are just styrofoam cups. I don't remember their size. They're, they're pretty small. I got a pack of them from a, the dollar store. They're super cheap. I've went through different sizes of cups. And you know what? I don't see a difference between using a large cup or these cups in the aquaponics system. These tend to just take up less space. You put the plant in, and they're filled with a uh, pea gravel in these cups. And I've poked several holes in them so water can flow in and out easily. And... When the as the plant grows, the roots come out of those holes, and the plant. I've like I said, I've had huge bell peppers, jalapeno uh, plants, you name it, and they've got very very large, even tomato plants, huge. The, the tomato pan plants grew higher than the lights, and these little cups held them just fine. So these cups uh, work great for me. They're cheap, and so we just. Uh, I decided on that size. I went and got a, a, a adapter for my drill that cuts holes uh, and then just measured the, the cup size. So when the cup dropped in, then the, the top of the cup being larger than the bottom would seal tight and hold it up perfectly. And that's how that was done. The type of lights I've used, I've, I've used all sorts. I think when I first started the aquaponics, you know, they, they have expensive grow lights. I wanted to see what I could do with on, on a pretty modest budget, uh, and to be quite frank, as cheaply as possible. So I thought uh, I would get the, uh, like, shop lights, those kind, the, the tubes, fluorescence, and they come in the right um, temperature of, of light for uh, green growth and for flowering, for blooming flowers. The problem is, is the light's got to be three, four inches away from the plant. If it's any further than that, the plant doesn't get enough light, and you get real stringy plants, and they don't, they don't do very well. They don't produce. So I ended up moving to these spirals, and these spirals um, put out great light. They're only 100 watts, and they're daylight bulbs. And I tell you, I get, I've grown peppers, big pepper plants, and and I got peppers off of them off these bulbs. They've done very, very well. I'm thinking about experimenting a little with LEDs after this. LEDs is another bright one and they last a very long time. So when it comes to germinating seeds, and the method that seemed to work best for me is called the paper towel method. Again, you could probably look this up on YouTube and find several people with tutorials on how to do it because that's how I found out how to do it. And it's basically, I use the same jiffy little greenhouse container and I just lay a paper towel down and I put the seeds that I want to start on this paper towel and lay another paper towel on top of it and when I do that then I wet it with a, I just have a mister bottle wet it really good and then I close the lid and I actually have it sitting on three pop cans that hold it up and then a light bulb a dimmable light bulb underneath of it so I can adjust the brightness of that light bulb for heat for the bottom of it. It, used, it acts as a warmer. So that about wraps it up for me. I hope uh, you enjoyed the video. I know I enjoy working with the aquaponics, experimenting with different things, and learning uh, about it. It's been quite a, an adventure. I enjoy watching the plants grow. And I enjoy how uh, my family gets to interact with me and with the system during it. It's kind of been fun. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.